super excited for this stream because I've heard a lot about Azure and I've actually never had a chance to use it, but it's one of those skills that when I'm looking for jobs, it's constantly on the list of skills that people want from data science people and like ML devs. And so, and this is, this is a great, a great chance to sit down and figure out what, what even is Azure? How does it work? What's available? Unlike a lot of my machine learning streams where I'm teaching you something, this stream is going to be us learning together because I've never, I've never used Azure myself and I'm new to it as well. All right. So I started just by looking through some of the options on Azure. And so there's a couple different options that I looked at. There's one that is more code oriented. There are of course, Jupyter notebooks. What place doesn't have Jupyter notebooks? There is some really cool stuff with the studio. And so that's where I thought to start today because it seemed like the fastest way to kind of get a project up and started really quickly. Azure ML Studio is what it's called. One thing that is really cool that I didn't know is that they give you like $200, I think, of free compute and resources. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a little bit of um some some dollars to play with, which is gonna be nice. I wanted to kind of show you all from the ground up how to really get started. Other than that, like all I did was click start a data analytics project and this is where we are. So you are jumping in right at the start with me. I don't know Databricks to be honest. So I was kind of thinking that uh, this, this seemed more in my wheelhouse personally. So I wanted to get started with this and let's see, there's a studio. I think this is this. Okay, here we go. Yes, let's create a work workspace. Okay, a foundational resource in the cloud. Well, this looks like a different different place. So let's just actually go back to the start. Create a resource, let's do that. Machine learning, create. Yes, I want to create a, a machine learning, please. A singular one, one machine learning, please. So create new resource group. Provide the following information to configure your resource. Let's see. Workspace name, so let's just call this like day one. Is there dark mode? <laughs> Settings. Oh, oh, there we go. I too am a major fan of, of dark mode. So let's see here, we need to continue to fill out our, our workspace. Let's get back to the documentation I was looking at. So we're gonna do tutorial. Create a simple classification model without writing a single line of code. So we've created our, we're working on creating our workspace and here's where we, we need these, these different fields. So workspace name, I was thinking of something sassy and then I'll try to be like, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll just call it day one. Day one tutorial. That's not tutorial, create new. We'll do basic and just call it again, tutorial. Alpha, alpha numeric, okay, so day one tutorial. I don't need advanced stuff. This is not a high business impact workspace, no. Review and create, create. Validation passed, that's great. I answered everything. I got all the things I need. Okay, so it can take several minutes. That's fine. We can catch up here. Let's let's see, We our deployment is complete. What next? Let's let's actually follow the, the instructions here. <laughs> like I can just go off on, do it all on my own. So, yes, please. Yes, please, I would like that workspace. Or no, we call it day one tutorial, get started. Okay, why is it bright again? Um, I would like a tour, but I would like the tour to be in dark mode. In the left lane, automated ML. Okay, new automated ML run, yes. So select data set from local files. New, that's fine. Um, Yes. Okay. So this is, this is like the, for the tutorial, if you go into the documentation, you'll see they provide this, this CSV on bank data for use with this particular tutorial. And so that's what, that's what we're working with. And then let's see, skip rows, some headers, settings and preview, the schema. Okay. So we don't want day of the week. It says that's kind of cool. They're just letting people toggle that. That's a very intuitive format. I, I like that. Create. Yes. Give me data, make it. Um, so we have our data now. I think, let's see, next, no, data set is required. Cool. Enter new experiment. All right, here's our, my first AutoML experiment. 
and select a compute cluster, create a new compute. All right, virtual machine type, CPU, that's fine. Select from recommended options, two, okay, next. Compute name. What should we name our compute? Our minimum node is one, nodes to zero, and max nodes. I mean, this is really small data. I think we just need one. Waffles, waffles. I love that. Okay, waffles is our compute. <laughs> Poor Microsoft is like, what? All right, 120, we're good there. Create our compute target, create it. So primary metric, view additional configuration settings. Yes, give it to me. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so these are the these are the metrics I was looking for earlier. Oh, oh, this is cool. I can just be like, nah, I hate decision trees. Don't use decision trees. That's cool. And so this is just none. That's fine. Validation. Yes. And my hopefully my wonderful um, machine learning misfolks feel comfortable with kfold cross validation. Finish save. Finish to run the experiment. Let's run our experiment. Metrics. Oh, hello. Hello. This is really neat. I love these metrics. This makes me so happy that there's just so much. Oh, yes. Confusion matrix. Let me see it. I love confusion matrices. So it did, it did two different models simultaneously and did seven runs, each run of which was doing five fold cross validation. Like you would have to set all of that up. Not only that, but it would take much longer than it did here. This is what I've been really interested to see is <laughs> a model explainability run in the child runs tab. Oh, child runs, here we go. Okay, run one back up at the top. So let's go here, run one. So it did all of these. That's really cool. All right, and then select the first one. It is, it's still doing the explainability run. All right, never mind. Um, we wanna look at child runs. And it is cute. All right, Waffles cluster has one busy nose. Why is Waffles busy? What are you doing, Waffles? Waffles has succeeded. You are running. Oh yeah, it's finalizing this run. And then it's queuing up all these other ones. Okay, all right, that's cool. We can chat, we can hang out while we're waiting for explainability runs. I'm really interested to see what the explanations are. We can see a little bit of a, a preview of them here. Here we go, preview of explanations. Nothing's failed, that's good. So it's still running. Uh, oh, here we go. What do they, okay. Oh, so this is interesting. Okay, so I think this is some of the EDA that we were talking about. That's really cool. This is really, really cool. I feel like this is, this is really interesting to me because at least in my mind, right? When I do exploratory data analysis, usually that comes before the model selection and before like the building and the training of the model. So I would almost like to see some of this kind of exploration of the data set more before, even though like they have this auto selection of model type and things like that. I still, I think I would like to be able to explore the data even before I move to the training stage. Okay, we've seen the metrics, so that's really nice. Okay, so this is cool. To me, this is also part of explainability. This is really interesting. Now, one thing I did notice, I don't know if all of you picked up on this too, when we were just kind of skimming the data set a little bit, I did see things like typos, strange formatting and stuff like that. I wonder how they handle that. This is really cool. So it tells me imbalanced data. We're alerted to the imbalanced data. What is it gonna do about that? This is really cool. So, okay, automated ML has built-in capabilities to help deal with it, weighting it, detecting it, probably upsampling, yeah, upsampling or subsampling, performance metrics that deal better with imbalanced data, resampling. Ah, oh, this is really cool though. Because to me, like explainability is, is more than just here's the numbers, right? Explainability is also this really well done, almost exhaustive documentation. And that's that's like another hill that I will die on is the importance of having really good documentation and knowledge sharing whenever you're doing kind of a big machine learning product. Um, so that makes me really happy actually, is that they have like, not just, hey, we found this problem and they leave you to deal with it, but they also have like a resource that you can go to about what it's, what it's doing, what the problem is. Also it's called duration, it's about a minute that's nice. All of all of my machine learning miss friends will see we're scaling our data. Tune hyperparameters. 
So this is how you do it in the code. Because that would, that would be frustrating if there was no way to hyperparameter tune in the um, automated ML. Ah, I missed this. This is an explore tab with our model. So I think there's a lot more that we can take a look at here. Please generate profile to view the schema and summary statistics. All right, so let's generate a profile and we'll use poor waffles whenever waffles is free to do this. But so it looks like there is an option for EDA. I'm surprised that wasn't in the tutorial. That's that's good to know that there's like that explore tab. So it is running. Let's see, let's, 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 let's update. Oh, that's, that's the data set parsing. I think this is still doing our explainability, but we did get kind of a little bit of a preview of what the, explainability looked like which is which is cool and it's good to know it's i think it's tough to just kind of say like explain model and then you talk about like feature importance and like data relationships because explainability is so much broader than that but i love that they have that though so we have run all of these different models and you can see with like varying levels of success right like i think our worst model right is this about 70 about 80 percent but so this has been really interesting like with the speed like each of these models has taken about a minute to train and to evaluate. I didn't see an option to set like proportion of train test validation split. But again, like these are these are small details that are probably because I just followed this particular tutorial and we didn't really dive into the details. I like this data guardrails. So this is something we found a little bit later that identifies um, some of the issues in the data. So this I thought was really, really cool. And it like redirects you to read more about how to address various issues in your data set. Yeah, really cool. We've kind of gone through a very, you know, basic tutorial, gotten a little more comfortable with the interface, learned some of the tools and the features available. Obviously, when we dive into some of the bigger projects, it's going to be a lot more. For tonight, this is a really good start, like learning kind of what's available. Bye, everyone.